Hey guys, Dreno Zero, how you doing? I hope all is well in YouTube land. Whatever part of the world that you are in, first and foremost, I know all is not well in certain parts of uh, the world. With the hurricanes and the floods and the fires and the earthquakes, uh, our thoughts and prayers uh, go out to everybody who is either in, in the stuff, so to speak, as far as uh, dealing with the aftermath or about to get hit by the hurricane. So, uh, yeah, our hearts and prayers go out to uh, to all of the folks involved in all that. So, here in uh, my part of the world, we are getting into early fall, extreme late summer. We are going to go and run the hills and look at our nut trees and try to get some walnuts because I need to start getting my traps ready for trapping season. Our harvesting is just about done. We've got a few apples that uh, we got left to put up. But our harvesting and canning is about done, so now we need to start looking forward to putting meat in the freezer in the fall and the winter. And that's what we're going to go do. We're going to go look for some nuts so we can get some dye going on. We're going to look for some hickory nuts if they're ready. We're going to look for squirrels and deer sign and uh, just kind of run the hills. So let's go do hillbilly fall time stuff. <laughs> we'll take you along when we, as we go. My favorite spots out here man is on top of this ridge with this view this is the summertime view some of the trees are changing but not quite yet I, uh, I hope the camera does it justice man because this is one of my favorite favorite places up here it's peaceful and beautiful out here on these hills we're on the one ridge of the hill looking over across that other ridge and down or in the in the valley there where the creek run the, the creek road runs down down there along the bottom and that's where our, our houses and our neighbors houses and stuff are down along the creek because just up here on these ridge tops and stuff your driveway would be uh, pretty crazy to get in and out of this is why we have four wheelers and four wheel drives and old trucks and stuff like that so that we can get around the hills we're coming over here to a shag bark hickory tree a nice big old one and I can see already that it's loaded, man, loaded with hickory nuts. They're not quite ready. I don't see any of them on the ground. But this is what we like to see. Good sign, good squirrel season, good deer season. We'll probably harvest a little bit of this loose bark here. Uh, I'm not sure if we've ever told you guys or not, but this is really good arthritis medicine. This shag bark hickory bark, we're just taking off the loose stuff off of the outside. And uh, you add it in a big pot with water uh, and boil it down into a syrup. And then you take the syrup uh, for your uh, arthritis pain. Uh, and it really helps. It does help. It's, this is just one of them things that, you know, that, like I said before, you know, that the, uh, the Indians taught the old, old timers. And the old timers taught the, uh, the old timers. And then now we're, uh, you know, trying to learn what we can still. A lot of it's gone, that old knowledge, but we try to do the best we can to keep it alive. You see that's another hickory tree right there, and it's got a lot of nuts on it. So here in a, we're going to look around here and get some more of this bark and uh, look for some deer sign. I can see some trails coming in and out here. And uh, then we'll go up to the old, the old, old home place back on the other, uh, behind us there's another ridge. And there's an old, old home place back there. And uh, we'll go check it out. It's got a couple of walnut trees from where the old timers planted there right around their house. And uh, we'll go check it out. It's really cool. That's another one of my favorite places. So, well, I'm going to drop the camera. Sorry about that. All right, guys. There's another look. And when we're up here squirrel hunting this fall and winter, we'll get to try to get another shot of when it's, uh, you know, when it's all colored and the leaves are changing. It's just gorgeous. I just love the hills, man. Alrighty, let's get on with it. This is uh, one of the little cow ponds. We call them cow ponds because the cattle come down 
and I'll uh, come down in here and water. You can see they got the cattle paths coming up in here, and they'll come down here and get a drink. Uh, we have fish, bluegill, and some uh, little small largemouth bass. Uh, but we, uh, I remember we catching turtles out of here. I did a video about catching turtles uh, a couple of years back out of this little pond. This is what it looks like in the daytime. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Remember, the last time you guys saw this pond was just a couple of weeks back when we was frog hunting. This is one of the ponds that we frog hunted in. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous little area here in the shade. We didn't do too much fishing in here this year because we wanted to give it a year to kind of recoup and uh, let the fish population build back up again. These little bitty ponds, it doesn't take a whole lot to uh, to take the fish out of them. You know, if you, if you catch a whole bunch and you, you keep a whole bunch, then next thing you know, there's no fish left. So we're not trying not to fish it this year. We've been uh, fishing the river. But we're going to look around here and see if we can find any coon sign. The raccoons will come in and uh, chase minnows and crawdads and stuff like that. Because, we're uh, like I said, it won't be long. We'll be getting into trapping season here in the next couple of months. So, I'm going to spend a little time looking around here, then we'll move on up to the old home place, which is up over that way just a little ways, right down on the other side of that pasture. And we're going to look at that nut tree right there. You see that big shaggy bark hickory nut tree is right in the center of the screen. Let me zoom in on it. I can already see the nuts on it. I don't know if you guys will be able to see. I don't know how this camera is going to pick them up, but that thing is loaded with nuts too. Well, there's going to be a lot of foraging food this fall. There's a lot of stuff that we could forage. It's still a little early. The, the nuts aren't quite ready. Uh, the ones that we found so far, anyway, haven't been quite ready, but that's okay. We know where they are, and we'll be back to get them. We'll check on them every week or so, and whenever they get ready, we'll uh, come back and harvest them. And uh, it's still definitely early to, to try to find any shaggy main mushrooms, the fall mushrooms that we get. But uh, we're just kind of out and about exploring. So, anyway... Let me look around here at this pond here real quick, and then uh, we're going to go to the old home place. All right, we're out here by where the old, 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 old home place was. There's uh, uh, the old cistern right there that, uh, that's been covered up to keep the cows out of it. This, uh, up until recently here, this used to be the, the open, the old cellar uh, until it uh, uh, started causing the issues, and uh, they filled it in. There's one of the old rocks. Oh crap, let me answer the phone. Alright, anyway, it's a dang shame that there's a cell phone signal out here on this ridge, man, because I just, I don't like my cell phone. I have to have it with me just in case, but dang it. <laughs> anyway, these old walnut trees that they planted at the back of the, the old house set up here with the cellar underneath it. And like I said, this is the old cistern, and some would say that it looks like a well. And it might be a well, but nobody's been around long enough to know for sure. Uh, but it is most probably a cistern where it would just collect rainwater that seeps in and rainwater from the old roofs uh, from the old home place there. And then, of course, you'd have this area out here would have been uh, your, your pasture and garden area and stuff like that. So you can, you can usually tell in the hills where there was an old home place because there will be things that are planted uh, that are obvious. There used to be a couple of apple trees out here, but they've uh, you know, since gone away. But there's a big rose bush over here, a wild rose bush, and I'll try to zoom in on it. And it looks like we are already getting, those are some nice, big, fat rose hips. For uh, making rose hip tea and rose hip wine, it is very, very good for you. Uh, we pick them in the fall because in the wintertime when there's a lack of fresh fruits, especially citrus fruits, those rose hips are full of vitamin C. And uh, it's good to make some rose hip tea and add a little bit of honey to it to sweeten it up because they're very bitter and they taste like crap, but they're full of vitamin C. So that's a good sign anyway that this early we got some good rose hips going on. We'll probably get down there and collect them, but I got to go through all the stickers and uh, <laughs> the rose bush in order to get to them. So anyhow, we're going to keep on exploring. The walnut trees look good. Hickory trees look good. Everything's still real green. We got to wait for these walnuts to fall off of the tree so that we can get them and uh, steep them in water to make a dye to dye our traps. But we'll do that whenever they start coming off here in the next couple of weeks. And let's go see what else we can get into.
here's an uh, old mint, an old mint plant. You can see those little purple coney flowers and these leaves. Uh, this is good. I mean, it's it's spearmint. You can smell it. You smell that? <laughs> Take a whiff. <laughs> but it's definitely minty, and it's uh, good to add to your teas. Uh, or you can, if you make your homemade toothpaste with. Uh, baking soda and stuff like that, you can take some of these leaves and crush them and get the oils out of them to get your spearmint flavor for whatever it is that you are trying to make spearminty if you have this in your area. It's good stuff. I really wish you guys could smell it because it smells good. It smells much better than I do. <laughs> but that's what a little bit of mint looks like. Okay guys, this here is a yellow locust tree. Remember back in the spring we were getting the blossoms and the blooms from the black locust tree. This is a yellow locust tree. Uh, I don't know if you can get a shot at the top. It's, they're kind of spindly and usually they have leaves at the very top. Uh, thin uh, thin leaves uh, that'll be on long stems that are kind of in a row. I don't know how well you can be able to see them. But old timers uh, call this tree, this yellow locust tree, they will call it a, uh, a guaranteed fire tree. And these are good to know where they are uh, because you can make fire with this tree and a spark. Um, for those of you who spend a lot of time outdoors in the winter hunting and whatnot, these yellow locust trees, they'll have, you can see they got these funguses. I'm not quite sure what the exact name of the fungus is. <coughs> we call them horseshoe fungus. And even though they may feel a little wet when you, when you see like there's one right here, how you break it off, it'll feel a little damp on the outside like a fungus, but the inside will usually be pretty dry. And you can just take your pocket knife and scrape you up a little bitty pile of tinder with this fungus for fire making. And this will be what you catch your spark with. You can get a, get a bunch of it in your hand. And make your little bird's nest and keep scraping it and keep scraping it until you get enough to catch a spark in your hand, this this fungus. And then when you're done with your fungus, I'm going to put this in my pocket so I don't waste it so that I have one. The bark on these trees is real thick. So you can see as you pull it off that it's a real thick bark. And what's special about this bark is it's layered like paper. So you can take a section of this bark like this. And you can start peeling it apart like it's paper. And that will also add to your, your tinder bundle. So you can sit here and flake all this paper apart uh, between these layers of bark. If I can find a good piece that will layer, layer apart for me. Here we go. Well, and then I drop it, of course. But you can see, there we go, how it's layering. It will all layer up. And you can take it apart. And it doesn't take very much time. And you'll have yourself... A really nice tinder bundle that will catch a spark between the fungus and the bark and it's a really light easy to, uh, to tear apart bark and that's what uh, will give you a nice nice tinder pile that way if you're out here hunting and you're in the winter time and it's cold and you're getting wet even in the even in the wet this stuff on the inside of this bark is dry uh, and the inside of the fungus is dry and you can still build a fire even if it's snowing and sleeting and stuff like that, it'll still catch a spark and you can make a fire. That way you can warm up and you're not going to be out here uh, suffering from hypothermia or any you know, worse. You know, hypothermia will get you if you're not careful, if you're running the woods. So this is all important information to know. There's a squirrel in that tree. We're in one of my favorite squirrel hunting spots. And uh, I'll be after you, buddy. <laughs> but this is all good stuff to know. Old lost you know, knowledge that I try to share. So that way if somebody's out deer hunting and there's a storm room moves in or their truck breaks down, uh, then they can find themselves a yellow locust tree. And these are all over the eastern United States, the eastern woodlands of the United States. I'm here uh, in southern Ohio, which is northern Appalachia, and they've got them everywhere around here. But just this little bit of knowledge might do you some good one of these days. So yellow locust tree. Look them up, learn about them. And uh, see if you got any around you and run your hunting spots. That way you know that you got a, uh, a safe refuge uh, if there's an emergency pops up when you're out about. So, good things, man. All good stuff we're finding out here. And uh, this is just some of the things that we do. 
uh, at the end of the summer and early fall to see what the fall is going to offer us. We see now that it's going to be a very productive year as far as nuts go and as far as critters go because where there's food, there's critters. And uh, that makes us happy. It means we're going to be able to fill up our freezers. Uh, maybe the last shot we do, I'll show you guys at home getting my deer stand ready. Yeah, we'll do that. When we get back home to the house, I'll show you guys how I get my deer stand ready for deer season. And then I will end the video there. So we'll see you guys in a bit. We're going to jump back into the mule or the uh, the side-by-side -side four wheeler, whatever it is that you want to call it, and uh, head out of the hills and head back home. Start working on my deer stand. So we'll see you in a bit. Here's another one of them yellow locust trees. You can see that the, the horseshoe fungus will get really big and sturdy. Uh, but you can just take your skinning knife or your hunting knife and cut you off a chunk uh, towards the inside here where it's going to be dry. You don't need the whole, the whole thing unless you want to take it home and save it and put it in your fire kit. Um, but there's just, I mean, they're everywhere. And these horseshoe funguses, they'll be, sometimes they'll be small like this one that I got here off of that tree over there. And sometimes they'll be great, great big. But if it's on a yellow locust tree, it's going to be this horseshoe fungus. Now I just love it in the woods. Can you tell this is, man, this is where I'm in my element, is out here amongst the hills and not people. <laughs> so we're going to head back. Alrighty, as promised, getting my deer stand ready out here on my uh, front porch slash deer stand slash hair care and tire center. Face that out towards the hay field. Ah, and I'm ready for the deer. Ready for deer season. And I pity all you guys that live in town. They got to go put big stands up and big blinds up. And uh, I guess that's uh, just one of them things that's the benefit of living where I live. <laughs> anyway, I'm just messing around, you guys. But this is really where we shoot our deer from. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is just a little bit of running the hills with us today and seeing what we do. I hope it was enjoyable. I hope it was a little bit of information that you guys could uh, share with others. I'm not quite sure what else to say. We're going to go in and uh, start doing other stuff. And uh, I don't know. We'll see you guys in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. Y'all have a great rest of the day. God bless. The end. Buzz, buzz. The end.